Did you know that when a designer earns only more than 200 US dollars per month, they already belong to the top 10% earners on Ravelry? And did you know that fewer than 100 designers worldwide earn more than 3000 US dollars per month before taxes? No, then keep on watching. Hi everyone, Norman here. Today's video is super, super special. Almost exactly two years ago, I published the first post on my blog. So I wanted to use this anniversary to give you some behind the scenes impressions and show you what it takes to become a knitting designer or blogger. Like how much effort it is to shoot a video like this one here, how much you can earn with pattern sales and ultimately what it means to run a knitting business. And there is another reason why I am showing you this, because today I finally launched my brand new Patreon account. Let's face it, trying to earn money with knitting tips and tutorials is, as you will shortly see, not exactly your express highway to fame and fortune. By becoming a patron, you can not only support my work, you can also unlock special knitting tips that go way beyond the ordinary. I am starting with an awesome episode on how to truly avoid ladders when knitting in the round with tips and tricks that really help. Then of course, you can access knitting patterns and behind the scene shots and stories. So click on the first link in the description below and become a patron today. Help me putting out more content for you. And no worries, you can cancel your subscription anytime. And if you subscribe within the first 48 hours, you will get early access to my brand new knitting glossary as an exclusive welcome gift, but only in the first 48 hours, so don't wait too long. So far I published more than 100 videos here on this channel and another 50 on my second channel and this is my first video where I ever actively promote one of my services. You won't find a single sponsored video here on my YouTube channel or on my blog and or you know uh, annoying messages or giveaways from a sponsor that interrupt a video. I don't actually accept free yarn or tools either. I feel my objectivity is worth more than that and I hope you as a subscriber can tell the difference. And of course, I strongly believe that basic knitting patterns and basic knitting knowledge should be accessible to you no matter your income. It shouldn't be hidden behind a paywall. On the other hand, it takes a lot of time and effort to produce my videos and patterns. And at the end of the day, likes and thank yous cannot pay my bills. So if my lessons and tips have helped you in the past, if you value my show, then please consider becoming a patron today and help me maintaining my standard. You know, a bit like an honesty box, because this has become my full-time job. So let's take a look behind the scenes to see what this actually means. Now part of this video is a shameless self plug for my new Patreon account. But at the end of the day, there is a valuable lesson for all knitters here. I think you know that I go above and beyond the ordinary with all my tutorials and patterns. But at one point, you gotta talk shop and show people what you are worth. You know, a bit like when someone asks you to knit something for them or when you decide to sell your finished projects. It's very important to know your worth and stand up for it. Sadly, selling hand knitted items way below their value has become so ingrained in our society that we've come to a point where people complain when a knitter charges a tenth of a minimum wage and dares to sell fingering weight socks for 50 US dollar a pair. Yet it might take 30 hours to finish them, more if it's an intricate pattern. Ask one of your friends if they're willing to work 30 hours in exchange for 50 US dollars. They'd probably say no. Yet when it comes to knitting, that seems to be an acceptable trade. How crazy is that? So I'm sitting here in my living room recording this episode and this is an angle you typically don't get to see. No matter if it's a blog, social media or here on YouTube, it's very important to stress what you 
get to see is typically a heavily edited part of someone's life or skills. Now, of course, most people kind of accept that, that what you see on Instagram is photoshopped and the reality is often less glamorous. On the flip side, most people probably aren't aware of the fact that while it might look fun and effortless, usually very long hours of work went into producing even a single shot. So what does it take to shoot one of my videos? Typically, I spend between one and eight hours composing and writing a script. This means figuring out how to best present an idea or concept, researching alternatives, editing my vision so it's all nice and crisp and every word counts. Then there is another one to eight hours spent on knitting swatches. These are all the swatches I knitted in February alone. Setting up my camera equipment, gathering all props, adjusting the lighting will take another 30 minutes. I don't have a dedicated uh, studio here, only my living room. Now don't laugh, but doing a manicure is another 15 minutes. The macro lenses that I'm using are ruthless and even a tiny spot will look like I just came in from a week of gardening. And then it comes to actually filming. And the harsh truth is for every minute that you see, I recorded at least five. Often it might seem that knitting a certain pattern or technique is a breeze for me. And in a way it is, but doing it on camera and doing it flawlessly often takes more than just one try. Especially as I'm sitting in a super awkward position and have to look at the screen all the time. And when I finally think it's perfect, I notice it was out of focus. So a video of 30 minutes probably takes three to five hours to record. After that, there are typically another four hours of editing and post-processing. This is a knitting channel, so I don't do any crazy special effects or so, but just screening all the material and simply stringing it together takes a lot of time. And after that, there's another 30 minutes up to an hour to write the subtitle. So there you have it, that's a lot of work. And of course, once I'm finished, my work doesn't stop. I still have to answer comments. You know, because I feel when I ask questions like, comment right now in case you like these behind the scenes impressions, like literally comment below right now. I feel I am obliged to answer. So often I see influencers on social media asking questions to get a higher engagement for their posts without ever taking the time to answer. And I feel that's not very nice. If I ask a question, I feel it's my duty to read the comments and answer them if they require an answer. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not sharing all this to complain. Quite to the contrary. I love what I'm doing. Still, this has become a full-time job, one I really enjoy and would love to continue. And that's the very reason why I set up this Patreon account. So those who can afford it can support my work and of course, get access to special knitting tips as a little thank you. But in this episode, I also want to take a look at patterns. Maybe one of you watching might have considered publishing a pattern yourself. Here's what you should know before you make this decision. If you go to Ravelry, there are currently 681,000 patterns available and 153,000 patterns are free. That is your competition. So whenever you publish something, you kind of have to ask yourself, what is my pattern bringing to the table that a knitter cannot get for free or get in a better quality elsewhere? And trust me, with that kind of volume of patterns available, this is far from easy. And then there is of course the income side to consider as well. Let's say your pattern costs five US dollars. Sounds like a lot, but let's take a look at the math. If I sell it on Ravelry, Ravelry will keep 3.5% as a sales fee. Then PayPal will also claim 57 cents. So there's a fixed fee of 30 cents and a 3% transaction fee, which will apply to the full price as Ravelry doesn't deduct its fee straight away. 
whatever. So starting with five US dollar, I end up with four US dollars and 25 cents in my bank account. I will also have to pay transaction fees and exchange rates. So realistically speaking, I can only work with four dollars and 10 cents. Now here in Germany, we have to pay an income tax and of course health insurance. So let's say those $4.10 are net revenue. While the exact percentage will depend on your income, let's say I do earn a proper full-time income. Then I'd have to pay 21% in taxes and another 15% for health insurance. So there would be only $2.62 left after all these deductions. The exact percentage will of course depend a bit on the country where you live. But at one point, any designer will have to pay taxes and having health insurance and possibly a retirement fund is typically a good idea. Now, developing even a small pattern like these cute little carrots I recently revised just in time for Easter. By the way, Patreons will be able to access this pattern for free. Developing such a pattern probably takes around 40 hours. There's the actual knitting time, there's creating the PDF, organizing test knitters, editing, uploading, and of course marketing it. Let's say my minimum wage was 10 US dollars. That means compiling the pattern will cost me 400 US dollars in opportunity cost. Then there's probably another 200 US dollars for test knitting, materials and so on. So as a designer, I need to sell 220 copies of a pattern before all the effort starts making sense. And let me tell you, 220 copies is a lot in e-commerce. Typical conversion rates are around 0.5 to 1%. Meaning, if you have 1,000 interactions on a Instagram post, YouTube video, or newsletter, typically five to 10 people will buy something without further incentive. So to make these 220 initial sales, I would need around 50,000 people to watch a video 50,000 likes on Instagram or 50,000 people that opened a newsletter. And that is a lot, especially in the knitting scene where even the most successful designers don't have a million followers. And maybe now you get an inkling why I offer so many of my patterns for free. Setting aside that I really believe that basic knitting patterns should be available for free because I hardly invented how to knit socks or a hat. I personally also feel that if I sold them, my sales rates would be so low, so the effort really wouldn't make any sense. I could earn more as a temporary help at the shop next door. And if I offer them for free, I know at least that I help thousands of knitters instead of just a handful. But I guess this brings me back directly to my Patreon account. I mean, I don't want to lie to you. I do earn a dollar or two through ads here on YouTube and on my blog. At the same time, there are also a lot of expenses like web hosting, the newsletter and all the fees involved in running a blog. That's probably 2000 US dollars a year. Then there's video and photography equipment. I had to buy uh, studio lights and special lenses like this one here so I can record those macro videos that really get you close and where everything is in focus and nothing is blurry. My whole equipment probably costs 10,000 US dollars. And in the past two years, I probably reinvested every single cent I earned through ads here on YouTube and maybe even a little bit more. So I want to close this video with a very interesting question. The other day someone asked me why it took me so long to finish these gloves. I started probably five or six weeks ago and I only finished uh, 
like the other day, three days ago or so. And you know, you might have the impression that being a knitting designer or blogger is a dream come true. You know, earning money with the hobby you love so dearly. But to tell you the truth, I'm very far away from sitting in my chair, knitting all day and petting the cat I sadly don't have. In fact, if I can squeeze in two hours a day of selfish knitting, you know, actual projects and not drafts and swatches, I call myself lucky. In fact, I had a lot more time for knitting before I embarked on this journey. Again, I am not complaining. I'm mentioning these stats so you can get a good first impression of what kind of effort it takes to run a YouTube channel or a knitting blog. And of course, I know for a fact that a lot of knitters dream of becoming a designer or very, very popular, opening up their own yarn shop. And in a lot of these cases, it means that the hobby becomes a job and you don't spend your whole day with yarn, but you spend your whole day doing a lot of other things. Now this is me. Others may be faster, can do it cheaper or better or whatever. I can only be me and offer me. But if you like what's on the table, consider becoming a patron. You can cancel your subscription anytime and of course you get access to special knitting tips I don't share anywhere else. Either way, that's it. Enjoy the rest of the day and as always, happy knitting. And if you have a question regarding the whole topic of becoming a knitting professional, feel free to comment below.